Hello everyone, welcome to day 29th of January Lead Code Challenge and I hope all of you are having a great time. The question that we have in today is largest rectangle in histogram. Here in this question we are given an array of integers where each element represents the height of a bar. These bars are stacked together forming a histogram. What we need to do? We need to identify the largest area rectangle that gets formed in this histogram. For example, the bars are something like this 2, 1, 5, 6, 2, 3. And the largest area that gets formed is of 10 minutes wherein the height of this rectangle happens to be 5 and the width happens to be of 2 units. So we have already solved this question in the month of December 2020 but I just went through the video and I could figure out few improvement points there. Therefore I am reiterating the algorithm. Without further ado let's quickly look at the PPT through which we'll be demonstrating the algo and coding, then finally coding it up. So let's get started. So let's take the same example that was specified in the question. Uh, largest rectangle in histogram, lead code 84. It's a hard level question on lead code. However, I don't feel the same. The elements are 2, 1, 5, 6, 2, 3. What we will do, since we are interested in finding out the area of the rectangle, which is given by the formula length into breadth, which can be restated as height into width. We will consider each bar as one possibility of height and then we will try and identify the width. We'll have, once we have both these values, we can calculate the area. What I'm talking about, let's walk through one example. So we have the height as 2 and up till what width does it stretch? It stretches up till only one unit because on the right side we have a lower height, on the left side there is no pillar. So uh, the, up till only one unit this height is valid. So the possibility of the first area would be equal to 2 into 1, height into width. So the answer turns out to be 2 for this case. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see height as 1 unit and let's check up till what bars this height can stretch. This height can stretch up till 6, this one. And towards the right and towards the left, left it stretches up till this one. So how many pillars does it cover? It covers 6 pillars. So the possibility corresponding to this height would be equal to 1 into 6. Since the width parameter comes out to be as 6. Since it is greater than the previously calculated answer, so we'll replace it. The answer gets updated to 6. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see height as 5. So let's check up till what width does it stretch towards the right as well as the left. So it stretches up till over here towards the right and towards the left it's up till here. So how much width does it does it cover? In totality it covers a width of 2 units. So let's multiply 5 into 2. 5 into 2 gives us 10. This is better than the previously calculated area so that gets updated. The answer gets finally updated to 10. Let's proceed ahead. The next height turns out to be 6 and let's check up till what span will it stretch towards the right and the left. So we see and see a lower height immediately after this index towards the right similarly here as well. So the span for this height turns out to be of 1 unit. So the area turns out to be equal to height into width which is 6. 6 is lower than the max area that we have seen so far. So we'll skip it. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is height as 2 units. So let's check up till what range does it stretch towards the right as well as the left. So towards the right it's up till here. Towards the left it's up till here. How many bars does it cover? 1, 2, 3, 4 in totality. So 2 into 4 gives us the area corresponding to this height. The value turns out to be 8. 8 is lower than 10. We'll skip it. The last one is 3 and it stretches up to it stretches towards the right up till here and towards the left up till here. The span turns out to be 1 unit. So 3 into 1 gives us 3 and it is lower than the maximum value that we have seen so far which is 10. So we'll again skip it. Now if you have understood this much, you have understood the entire logic. What we need to do? We need to identify the width parameter, the range up till which the current bar stretches. So we want to look out for the lower possible value towards the right 
the 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 lower possible value towards the left and using which we can identify the span so if we have the right index up till which the current bar stretches if we have the left index up till which the current bar stretches we can use this formula to uh, to identify the width and then we will multiply it with the height value to actually calculate the area co corresponding to the current height and this is what we'll exactly do so let's reduce this bigger bigger problem into a smaller sub problem where we are only interested in finding out the right span of each bar if we can identify the right span we can in on similar lines can identify the left bar and using those two spans we can identify the width so the problem reduces to simply identifying the right span for each bar the basic or the naive approach to get the right span is pretty simple for each height you start the iteration you start moving towards right and as soon as you see a lower height you abort the process you have identified that position successfully where the height is actually getting reduced for example for this it gets reduced at this particular position uh, for uh, this index it gets reduced at this particular position however the time complexity for this approach will be order of n square because you for each height you are iterating towards the right direction can we do something better the answer is yes how we'll be using stacks for this and can you draw an analogy from the previous question that we have solved the answer is again yes uh, we solved uh, three questions in the past on similar lines the first one was daily temperatures if you are aware of that problem then this problem is a cake for for you the other one was next greater element towards right or next lower element towards right both the questions have been solved by me in the past as well and the concept we used to to solve all these three questions was tax so again we'll be using stacks and we'll be able to identify the next lower index for each height in a single time complexity that is order of n how to go about it let's get started let me just erase everything and let's create a stack and along with this let's start the iteration the first element that i see is 2 at 0th index so since stack is empty let's make the insertion so i see 2 at 0th index first entry signifies the index and the second entry signifies the height let's proceed next i see is 1 1 happens to be lower than the peakmost entry of the stack which is 2 that means we have identified a lower value for 2 so what we will do we'll pull out this entry this entry gets pulled out what is the index at this particular entry the index happens to be 0 so what we will set we'll set the height of the next lower index as 1 for the index 0 so for index 0 the height gets set as 1 and along with this we'll push a new entry onto the stack which would be equal to 1 comma 1 the first part signifies the index and the other part signifies the height value let's proceed ahead next we see is 5 at second index since it's greater than the peakmost entry of the stack we'll make an insertion onto the stack so this gets added and this happens to be 2 comma 5 let's proceed ahead next we see is 6 at the third index since it's greater than the peakmost entry of the stack we'll again make an insertion so 3 comma 6 gets added let's proceed ahead next we see is height 2 at the fourth index so what we will do we'll check the peakmost entry of the stack the peakmost entry of the stack has a height 6 since it is greater than the current height that we are currently iterating at 2 what we will do we found out a lower height for 6 so we'll simply pop this out this gets removed and uh, we will set uh, the index at the third index which is this one as 2 so for the third index the lower height turns out to be 2 let's proceed ahead again let's compare it with the peakmost entry of the stack the peakmost entry happens to be 5 5 happens to be greater than 2 this particular height so again we'll do the same kind of thing we'll set two height at the second for the second index so this is the index at which we will set the lower height as 2 also along with this we'll remove this entry from the stack uh, what is the next 
peakmost element of the stack the peakmost element of the stack turns out to be 1 1 happens to be lower than 2 will make an insertion onto the stack so stack gets updated with 4 comma 2 let's proceed ahead next we see is 3 at index 5 what is the peakmost entry of the stack the peakmost entry of the stack happens to be 2 and since 2 is lower than 3 so we'll simply make an insertion so 5 comma 3 gets added onto the stack so what all elements are left in this stack there are three elements left 1 comma 1 4 comma 2 and 5 comma 3 for all these three elements what will act as the rightmost span it uh, 6 will act as the rightmost span so we'll pull these elements out and you will set the number of elements that are present in the input array as the rightmost span so this gets updated to 6 6 and here as well 6 so we have finally identified the span up till which each element or each bar gets stretched towards the right we can do a similar kind of thing towards the left as well and then we will use this formula right minus left minus 1 into the height of each node to actually compute the area if you have any doubts don't worry it will be clear in the coding section let's get started here i have created a length variable that is storing the number of elements that we have in the height array i created the left span array i have created the right span array the left span array has been filled in by minus 1 by default and the right span array has been filled in, filled in by the number of elements that we have uh, in the input array by default i also have created a stack for actually computing both the right span and the left span for each index so this is pretty simple and straightforward also if you are still unable to uh, understand this concept mm -hmm. refer to the other videos which i am attaching below daily temperatures next greater element next lower element uh, visit that videos try and understand the concept there and then come back to this problem so what we do here is we start the iteration for i equals to 0 i is less than length i plus plus while we see the current height at the peakmost element happens to be greater than the current height that we are currently iterating at we simply pull out that element that index and we set right span for that index equal to the current element that we are currently at we do we keep on doing this in a while loop once we are done with this we simply make an insertion st dot push the current index onto the stack here we are not pushing values along with the ids why because using the ids you can compute the values once i am done with this i'll simply clear the stack then i'll go ahead and fill in my left span again on very similar lines start the iteration in the reverse direction till the time uh, my height at the peakmost index happens to be greater than the current height i update my left span to st.pop equals to the current index that i'm currently at i keep on doing this in a while loop and once i'm done with this i'll simply push the current element onto the stack now comes the interesting part uh, the, uh, we'll use the same formula that we talked about in the presentation so we start the iteration from i equals to 0 i is less than n length i plus plus we use the formula right span minus left span minus 1 into the current height to compute the height the area corresponding to the current height in case it is lower it is greater than the max high, max result variable max area variable then it will be replaced otherwise let's keep using keep on using the previous result in the end we simply return the max result so let's try this up time complexity of this approach is order of n this brings me to the end of today's session i hope you enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel and also if you are not that enthralled by this question you want uh, even a more difficult question than this question uh, i am attaching the link to the maximum rectangle area problem uh, do give it a shot it's an extension to this problem slightly more complicated than this so for those who wants to do a good revision exercise try to use that question for building the concept further